somos abençoados por apresentar uma dessas palestras perspicazes, intitulada O Sutra Suringama, os estados demoníacos do sentimento Skendras, continuação, parte 1 de 7, em Entre Mestra e Discípulos, dada em inglês, 27 de dezembro de 2018, em Taiwan, também conhecida como Formosa. It's good. Uh, please, <laughs> please sit down. <laughs> and wear your hat. Wear hat. Wear hat. Tai Mao Zhu, it's your own idea. When I was uh, still a monk, I uh, shaved head in winter, very cold, and I have headache. <laughs> when I was young, I was so cold. Probably is here. Yeah, that's right. I, I mark it here, <laughs> so I can continue. We should really thank the past masters, monks and nuns and scholars who have taken time to record the Buddha's teaching after the masters and Nirvana, and also for the past and present Persons, lay or monks or nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health or under any difficult situation to translate this so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present and future. May their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you. According to Buddhism and the believer and the tradition, when you read sutra and all that, you have to put on incense, flower, you know, and bow to the sutra first and thank all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva in ten direction, all respectfully before you read it, okay? And then you cover the sutra also with silk or, you know, beautiful cloth and I just make it more popular. Yeah, more easy, simple. And I apologize to all the Buddha. I say, if I done something wrong, according to the tradition, my heart is full of respect. It's just that I cannot always do that. So please, all the sin, whatever I've done wrong, is all on me, at least other people, they hear the names of the Buddha, according to the Sutta, they will get benefit. Yes. Yesterday we were talking about this uh, a good person when he attained some state of samadhi, and if he thinks he's a sage, then the demon of chronic depression will enter his mind, yeah? And he might take up knives and swords and cut his own body. Terrible. Or he may flee into the wildness, driven by constant anxiety, and be unwilling to see people. And lacking proper samadhi, he will certainly fall. Yeah. Today we continue. 
Further, Ananda, in this state of samadhi, the good person sees the disintegration of the form skanda and understands the feeling of skanda. As he dwells in this purity, his mind is tranquil and at ease. Suddenly a feeling of boundless joy wells up in him, and there is such bliss in his mind that he cannot contain it. This is called experiencing lightness and ease, but lacking the wisdom to control it. If he understands, then there is no error. This experience does not indicate sagehood. But if he considers himself a sage, then a demon that likes happiness will enter his mind. As soon as he sees someone, he will laugh, he will sing and dance in the streets. It happened, huh? Yeah. He will say that he has already attained unobstructed liberation, lacking proper samadhi, he will certainly fall. Samadhi is a state of, you know, um, deep meditation, but it can also mean that you're stable, you're very stable in spiritual practice. So if you don't have enough stability when you do meditation, you might have trouble controlling your whatever state of mind that you're in, like too much sadness, too much uh, happiness, too much craziness, too much uh, confidence, etc., etc. He already gone so high and feeling blissful. You would think he is a sage already. No, not yet. And even demon can come in his mind. How kapha! It's very scary. There was a demon of happiness. So be careful. Yeah, I heard about some people like that. They dance on the street and they hug people, and of course people think they're crazy, and then put off many people to go and learn meditation because of that. Yeah, mm. that they can possess, you know, possess state. But he's he's not harming anyone. It's just that he doesn't behave as if he is a, a normal. Saint. Further, in this state of samadhi, yeah, he could be in there and then, but he can go further if he doesn't think that he attained everything yet. And then, if he continue with this state, then he can go. The good person sees the disintegration of the form skanda and understands the feeling of skanda. He say he is already satisfied. <laughs> Suddenly, a feeling of unreasonable intense self-satisfaction may arise in him. It may include pride, a righteous pride, maybe arrogant, huh? Haughty pride, overwinning pride, <laughs> Buddha has so many vocabulary, and pride based on inferiority. My God! All of which occur at once, in his mind, he even looks down on the Tathagatas of the Ten Directions. He even don't respect any Buddhas. How much the more so on the lesser positions of sound hearers and those enlightened by conditions. Sound hearers. Buddha say all the time, sound hearer, eh? Kuan Yin, eh? This is called viewing oneself as supreme, but lacking the wisdom to save oneself. My God, you can't even save yourself in that stage. If he understands, then there is no error. This experience does not indicate sagehood. But if he considers himself a sage, then a demon of intense arrogance will enter his mind. He will not bow to stupas or in temples. He will destroy sutras and images so extreme, become fanatic, eh? extremely arrogant. He will say to the dana parties, these are gold, bronze, 
clay or wood. The sutras are just leaves or cloth. I mean, he's very arrogant, eh? disrespecting Buddha's stupa, statues, sutras, and all kind of holy things. The flesh body, he's talking now. He's talking to some anything that's not important. He even say these are gold, bronze, clay, or wood. The sutras are just leaves or cloth. What he means is the statues or the stupas, I mean, the small uh, memorial they make for the Buddhas or the saints. He say these are just gold and or, uh, bronze or wood or clay only. There's nothing in it, no meaning anything. Yes, The sutra are just leaves or cloth even. The flesh body is what is real and eternal, but you don't revere it. Instead, you venerate clay and wood. That is totally absurd. That's what he said, absurd. He finished talking. The practitioner opinions are like that. And now the Buddha continued commanding, those who have deep faith in him will follow him to destroy the images or bury them. He will mislead living beings so that they fall into the relentless hells. Lacking proper samadhi, he will certainly fall further in this state of samadhi. If he continue in this state of mind, then the good person sees the disintegration of the form of skanda and understands the feeling skanda. In his refined understanding, he awakens completely to subtle principles. Everything is in accord with his wishes. Uh, he may suddenly experience limitless lightness and ease in his mind. He may say that he has become a sage and attain great self-mastery. It's possible that we can fall into this kind of trap because these are so powerful and so extremely wonderful. Yeah, this, this kind of state of mind, so blissful, happy, carefree, and, and wise also, somewhat. So we think we already somebody, already Buddha, yeah. This is a problem when, if we don't have a master to guide you or scold you into your right mind, <laughs> subduing your ego by some, some mean, then you become like that might not be to the extreme as to destroy the sutras or the Buddha's images, but could be, you know, very self-aggrandizement kind of a status. In Tibetan Buddhism, sometimes the normal lama or anyone from outside come into the, into the monastery feeling that he is such and such a, a tuku, a, a Rinpoche, a master from uh, Rinpoche, um, teacher of this present Rinpoche, uh, this present abbot, they make a lot of scene and noise. Yes. And then one of the person who wrote this kind of story, she said that if such a practitioner are not lucky enough to be near a good friend like other lamas or his teacher who will subdue his ego by scolding him in front of everybody, degrading him, make him <laughs> become <laughs> zero to the ego again. Then he will continue to become misled like that until he gone insane. Then he will be very sad, he cry, he laugh, because nobody think, nobody believe that he's a, he's a tuku, you know, I mean the living Buddha, uh, nobody believed him that he is a former teacher of this present Rinpoche, and he expect this Rinpoche in the temple to bow to him, recognize him, uh, be grateful to him, and respect him, and worship him, all that kind of thing. Some people fall into that state also. And it's some true story like that in some Buddhist monastery. Yes. Then sometimes the master would ignore him or try to do something, to cure him immediately, uh, as soon as possible. 
But if you meditate alone, you don't have any good friend like that, you know, to check you out, to straighten you up, then you'll be in trouble. That's why meditating is also very uh, important that you must have a guide, yes, a good guide, who are not afraid to offend you. Mm? That would be better to, for your safety yeah, and your spiritual progress. It might hurt the ego, but what is ego anyway? It doesn't matter, he won't die. <laughs> if you hurt the ego, it doesn't hurt anything. It just makes you better only, right? <laughs> it's better than uh, continue to be insane or lose your spiritual merit or lose your wisdom, lose your uh, future uh, spiritual attainment or progress. Yeah? Because the Buddha mentioned before, those and those kind of person even cut off the seat of future enlightenment even, cut off his body seat. It's very scary, yeah? That's why formerly not many masters would take up a lot of disciples. Yeah? Even Bodhidharma, he didn't want to talk to no one a lot. He knows he's all deaf anyway, <laughs> just attaching to rope or uh, whatever, rules and regulation, and not really understand the meaning of meditation. So he just went to a cave and meditated for nine years. And finally some disciple, truly a handful of them, four or five of them came and seek him out and he really teach them. But even among the five of them, only one really understood the essence of it. The other four, he said, oh, you are just like, you, you get my skin, <laughs> meaning outside of me, uh, you get my hair or whatever. He meant just not yet inside just outward only, outside only. Only one, Hueker, he is the one who attained what the Master tried to teach him. And then after that, Bodhidharma left, go back to, to India. Yeah. They said he is sick and died, so they bury him. But when they open the coffin, there is nobody there, only one shoe, <laughs> one shoe left. And the other one outside somewhere saw, saw him with one shoe on his uh, staff. <laughs> the one shoe in the coffin and one shoe he take with him. <laughs> Just to let people know that he's still alive or resurrected, that's all. Same with Kabir. Huh? The Muslim and the Hindu, they fight with each other who should take his body because um, he's the master of whom, you know, he has both Hindu uh, follower as well, a Muslim follower. So both of them fighting, wanting to take his body. And when they open the coffin, there's only two roses in it. <laughs> one for Muslim, maybe one for Hindu. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> He's not there anymore. <laughs> yeah, some master can take their body with them, or resurrect it, with the body or without the body. Yeah. It is said that Jesus resurrected, yeah? And then later he went to Kashmir continue his practice with some small circle of disciples. I visited his uh, so-called tomb. Eh? Yeah. You had to pay, no? Eh? <laughs> I had to pay some money to, <laughs> to go inside. Yeah. yeah, they come and tell you outright, money, <laughs> box. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, of course, they need it maybe just to take care of the tomb, you know, some caretaker, and they need to leave of it, no? I had to pay. I don't have that much money, but she told me to pay, so I paid. <laughs> I go inside, have a look, and nothing much, just the tomb and the name. No tomb even, you don't see. It's just supposed to be there. Suppose he lived until 120 years old yeah, in Kashmir. So maybe he resurrected and taken his body with him as well, like a beer or Bodhidharma. Huh? All right. Good translation? Yeah, wonderful. Oh, I'm so happy. At least the Chinese, you know, very difficult for them to come here. You know, not all of them have a lot of money. China is big, you know, not every Chinese city near Taiwan. Sometimes they have to go maybe with ox cart or something and get the bus and get the train and then get the airplane. It's very difficult. Some take two, three, four, five days to get to Taiwan from their own home. All right, that's another one. Okay, here, here it is. You see sound here, right? 
Even the person who meditates in this kind, maybe another kind of meditation, when he reaches this state of self-satisfaction, intense self-satisfaction, not just normal, then he becomes so happy, you know, so arrogant. He even looked down upon those Guan Yin practitioners, the sound hearers, and those ahas that have been enlightened by conditions, or meaning those beings who are enlightened by themselves by some certain conditions, just like other disciples of the Buddha, enlightened by touch or by the sound of the Buddha, uh, hearing the voice of the Buddha, or by uh, the fragrance of something, yeah? For example, like that. Just because they have probably been practicing many lifetimes already, so now just some simple condition, they get enlightened. And then uh, uh, also there are some called Patekya Buddha, meaning the, the one who meditate all by themselves, yeah, and then by some uh, marriage from the past life, or maybe seeing one master by chance, and then became enlightened also. So these people are not necessarily disciples of Buddha, yeah? Okay. So, but the person who reached this state of extreme self-satisfaction, he thinks he's above everything. But this is just one state, which is called viewing oneself as supreme, but lacking wisdom to save oneself even. You can't even save yourself. <laughs> Not to talk about go out and save other souls. This is terrible, no? Nah? Then you're falling. If he knows it, then it's okay. But if he doesn't know, then he will fall. The demons and all that will come. You see this kind of so-called enlightened person? He can't even save himself, but he has followers. <laughs> the Buddha say those who have deep faith in him will follow him to to destroy the images or bury them, you know, destroy the Buddha statues and all that. He will mislead living beings so that they fall into the relentless hell. Bad one. Like in proper Samadhi, he fall. He fall, okay, one person might be okay. But because he's misleading others as well, that is a problem. So to choose a master is also a very difficult task, not to talk about uh, being enlightened or become a master one cell away. Oh, poor beings, I'm sorry, I'm telling you. Living in this world is, is like in a jungle, in a maze or something. You can never know. You don't even know who is your master. Even. You don't even know who is what. Yeah? How can you even know who is a master even, yeah? These kind of person who attain this kind of samadhi already can talk, have eloquence, yeah? Convince people, especially those who have no, no idea about meditation or dharma or anything. Of course, they will be more in trouble. And not just following him, but even fall into hell. This is really tragic. If you blindly follow him, it's not your fault. How come you even have to go to hell? What law is this? I want to tell you, I'm very angry sometimes with the so-called rules in this world and the Maya and all that. That's why I work day and night, because I cannot bear all this kind of injustice and pain that measure upon all beings, the animals, the humans, anyone, any alike, no one escapes, no one they, they would even relent. Yeah, the animals, what can they do? Or even human, what can they do? Huh? They heard that, okay, God is great, Buddha is great, they want to follow, they want to learn, they want to, to be enlightened. Huh? They want to get out of suffering. What have they done wrong? But you are not me. You cannot understand my pain, my pain in the heart. Because what have they done? What have the people done? Even if they follow the wrong teacher and wrong view, what have they done? They no harm nobody. If they go on the street and say, oh, I'm great, I'm great, because they, they misunderstand their greatness, they misunderstand their spiritual value. What have they done to anybody? You got that? You understand my anger, my, my pain? When they talk nonsense and they apply this kind of cruelty on anybody, I mean, really, it's on anyone. 
Nambok to kwa. Imagine. Hell is it not fun? Huh? And relentless hell even. Just because of wrong view. My God. I see only pain. That is unjustified pain and suffering for the innocent. If somebody kills somebody, okay, maybe you go to hell, fine. It's just uh, stupid, follow the wrong view. And this man, he has no proper guidance teacher, so he fall in the wrong state of attainment, that's all, and go to hell. And Buddha won't tell lie, you know what I'm saying? Just put them into hell just like that, huh? Wouldn't you be angry oh, yeah. if it's your children? Oh, yeah. You would do more than that. For me, these helpless people are like children. Understand me? Because they don't know anything. They're just like children, easily being cheated, seduced, and misled. Yeah? It's just like those innocent teenagers outside. The drug people use their innocence to. to to seduce them into bad habit, and then they become bad because they have no money to buy drugs, then they go steal, they go do this and that, and then they become criminal, just like that. Hmm? No matter if the maya right or wrong, it's all wrong. It's all wrong to punish people for the things that they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. That's why Jesus forgives those who crucify Him, because, please, Father, they don't know what they're doing. Truly, they don't know what they're doing. Even animals feeling sorry for humans when they're killing them. They're going to kill them, they, they cry. Not for them, but they feel, they feel sorry for the humans, because they don't know what they're doing. They will get a lot more punishment than, than the animal just get. See, the animal just being killed and dying, however brutal, but die. But they don't know, the humans who kill them don't know, they go to, to hell for I don't know how long, and being punished and being tortured forever. You know, like the story I told you about the, the man who killed chicken to make soup and, and sell? Yeah. Lucky Kwan Yin Bodhisattva interfered, otherwise he would continue being, you know, in hell forever. Not just swallow some hot coal and then being free and, and giving another chance again. You see that? That was a true story, no? But then how many people would believe him? and quit their crude way of life. Not too many. You can see that. You can see. How many people in Vietnam would read this story and, and even believe it? Huh? Oh man, there's endless, endless suffering in this world. Further, in this state of samadhi, the good person sees the disintegration of the form skanda and understands the feeling skanda. In this, in his refined understanding, this is more refined now, huh? He awakens completely to subtle principles. Everything is in accord with his wishes. He may suddenly experience limitless lightness and ease in his mind. He may say that he has become a sage and attained great self-mastery. This is called attaining lightness and clarity due to wisdom. He's already something, big shot. If he understands, then there is no error. This experience does not indicate, says Hood. The Buddha passed through all this, otherwise he wouldn't have known to teach you, okay? But he mastered it, yeah? Even the Maya sent some beautiful girl, sexy, come dancing, seducing him, he said, get lost. <laughs> I know who you are, get lost. Same Jesus, who meditate in the desert 40 days, remember? Yes. So Maya come and tell him. If you respect, bow to me, I give you the whole world. What did he say? Get lost also. Okay, now. But if he considers himself a sage, then a demon that likes lightness and clarity will enter his mind. Oh, I'm telling you. 
So cut it off if you think you're Buddha. Yeah, cut it off, all of you, <laughs> whoever, whoever telling me that you're on a seven or nine spiritual plane. Yeah, claiming that he is already satisfied, he will not strive to make further progress. That is the problem with all these stages that we have mentioned, that the Buddha has mentioned. You too feel too good. You never felt like this before in your whole life. There's something new. But these are just toys. It's like children, you know. You have good toy, bad toy, or more enchanting toys, and more new toys, more invented toys. But these are toys yet. If he's satisfied with that, he will not know all the real toys. You know, he play with the small cars. He didn't know there is a real one. Yeah. Oh, this is a problem. Yeah. If we are not satisfied with that, then we go further. But if we think we are great already, then we stop. That is a problem. Yeah. It's a pity. Yeah? For the most part, such cultivators will become like the unlearned bhikshu, monk. Yeah? Unlearned monk. He will mislead living beings so that they will fall into the avicii hell. All this is worse. Like in proper samadhi, he will certainly fall. My God, Maya, so cruel. That is a problem. If you really want to become a Buddha, he will be so harsh on you. That is the thing. That's why. Otherwise, how can you put somebody in hell? He's just practicing. Maybe he has not become a Buddha, but he harmed no one. You see that? They make all kind of this, you know, I'm telling you, <laughs> rule. Really? What kind of rule is that? What kind of law is that? Huh? This guy, he just practiced, maybe he don't have teachers, or he's mistaken, thinking that he become Buddha. Fine, but he harms no one, right? He may be boasting or being arrogant, but that's uh, nobody's business, huh? And if anybody is stupid enough following him, it's also not his fault. Why you have to go to hell? A witchy hell is the hell that you can't get out. So woe to you if you want to become a Buddha and not controlling your desire or, or your ambition or your mind. Huh? Must always humble, humble. I'm nobody yet, okay? Nobody. Just a little. Light and little sound, not yet, okay? Actually, most of you don't think that you will become a Buddha. <laughs> you think that, okay, Master Power will help you to be liberated and go to higher level so you don't have to suffer again and your five, six, nine generations don't suffer. I think that is good enough, okay, huh? Yes. To be Buddha, look at that, huh? I read this long, long time ago. I forgot that it's so gruesome like this. I forgot that it's so terrible. <sighs> but it's good to know, huh? It's good to know, so you can avoid trouble. Mm? Okay. Further, <laughs> still continue. <laughs> Further, in this state of samadhi, the good person sees. You know, he know. He see that it's all the form that he saw, the scenery. It's all from skanda. He already knows it. At least he knows that it is an illusion. And at least he knows, he understands that it's just a skanda feeling and all that is all illusionary. It's not real. He knows that. But still, huh? And in this clear awakening, he experiences an illusory clarity. Within that, Suddenly, he may veer towards the view of eternal or extinction, deny cause and effect. He denied, he rejected the karma theory, the karma, uh, you know, law. Yes, and then, and take everything as empty. There's nothing at all, don't worry, no karma, whatever you do, it has no effect, no. Uh, no hell, no heaven, nothing. The thought of emptiness so predominates that he comes to believe that there is eternal extinction after death, meaning there's nothing after you die. Yeah. 
he's so convinced because he he sees so many things, he sees all the ten directions, and he sees that all the elements that made up his body, it's just illusion anyway. During Samadhi, he don't feel he has a nose, a hand, a ears, eye, nothing, no body. So, so he feels that this is nothing really real. So when you die, also finito. This is bad. You know why? Because then you can do anything without fearing the consequences of the afterlife, without fearing hell. Maybe because of that, someone has attained this state or following someone who has attained this kind of view, they become fanatic. Nothing that, that can scare them, nothing or illusion anyway. But this is called the mental state of samadhi dissolving, so that one loses sight of what is right. Ah, if he understands, then there is no error. This experience still does not indicate sagehood. But if he considers himself a sage, then a demon of emptiness will enter his mind. How can you believe that such a high stage of enlightenment already still, the, the demon still can use your mind? Understand, because the mind is not the soul. Yeah, the mind is, is, is a subtle, a higher, higher kind of uh, instrument. The brain is instrument, yeah, physical, we understand that. The mind is just a more refined computer, yeah. High tech. <laughs> the mind is made at the second level. Therefore, if you go down from the fifth level to, to this world to do something or to help beings, you have to go through the second level to <laughs> be equipped <laughs> with the mind. It's just like if you want to dive into the sea, you must go and wear this kind of frock clothes, yeah, like that. So the mind is easily to be swayed, that's why, because it's not high level, it's not the soul, it's not eternal, it's just made by second level. It's just like one of the clothing you have to wear when you go down to this world. Without the mind, you can't function here. <laughs> the mind dictates the brain, the brain dictates the body. And if the mind is wrong, everything belongs to you, wrong. You're thinking wrong, you act wrong. Yeah, you behave wrong. Wow. So, the demon of emptiness can enter somebody else's mind like this, and then he will, he will slander the holding of precepts. Even he slander the moral codes. Yeah, calling it a practice of the initial vehicle, meaning he looked down upon the people who hold a precept and the moral. A standard as just you know like baby like <laughs> kindergarten yeah imagine he will say since the bodhisattvas have awakened to emptiness what is there to hold or violate this is also dangerous that means he don't care what he does eh? and then he might do something wrong harm other beings that he think is no problem anyway yeah I saw some do this Maybe not to that extreme, but uh, I heard many, and uh, not many, but because I don't know that many people. I saw some story in some of the magazine, you know, spiritual magazine. Some of the monks say, oh, I already make peace in the world, <laughs> meaning because everything is empty, war and peace is no problem, no need to worry about it. I mean, because inside he has peace already. Meaning that even outside no peace, inside he has peace. So if you have peace inside, that means outside doesn't matter. So it doesn't matter who die, who kill each other, that this, they still suffer, you know, even illusionally, the, the beings still suffer in war. So you cannot say it, it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> just because you have peace. It's just like a rich person. Every day he eats a lot of food and then he says, Oh, what means hungry? Hungry is no problem. Huh? Uh, it's all garbage talk, yeah? Tell him, tell them to eat cakes, <laughs> just like the Queen of, of France, because she has no idea. 
You lost touch with real life. Yeah, same. This person like that. Wow, there's so many, huh? Mm. Mm. There's so many, so many. But the Buddha has also told you here how to guard yourself and how to continue progress. Yeah, if we have time and continue further, okay. <laughs> right now, I continue with the demon, <laughs> so that you will recognize when they come, mm? and then you can protect yourself, okay, and go for higher. Oh my God. Okay. So. Because of this false view, influenced by this kind of demon, he will uh, slander those withholding the precepts, like the monks, the nuns, they are strict with their precepts. He will look down upon them, he will degrade them, he will slander them. That is a no-no, of course. Huh? If, even if you are not a monk, you know a monk, if he has his moral code, then it's good, right? At least good for him, good for society. Why, why go and slander them? Yeah. Now, but not only that. He thinks he already attained emptiness. Everything is empty. Everything illusion. Yeah. So he can do what he wants. So further than that, he will. This person in the presence of his faithful dana parties, meaning his um, his uh, so-called disciples. Yeah. Yeah will often drink wine, eat meat, and engage in wanton lust. The power of the demon will keep his followers from doubting or denouncing him, even if he's doing all these wrong things, uh, drinking wine, drinking alcohol, eating meat, engaging in lustful conduct. But the demon power is so strong that anyone who near him, near this person, will be kept from being doubtful. I have no demon to control you. <laughs> yeah, of course, at least you're free, okay? You're free. If you doubt me, at least you know you're free. <laughs> Nobody control you, yeah? So even if I'm wrong, you have no danger, because you, you're free to doubt or not doubt, you see that? At least, huh? You doubt me, it's good. I wasn't angry at all. I'm just saying, oh, you see all that experience and you still doubt me? But I never f felt angry or so angry. No, I, I wasn't, okay? That means good. <laughs> that means it's good. That means that you are free, that I don't oppress you or saying something or psychologically uh, suppress you so that you don't dare to even doubt me. You are free, even you are enlightened or not, you are free. <laughs> because if a master uses some magical power or some psychic or something, then you will be hold under his or her sway. You, you, you don't even, cannot even think the master is wrong. Here, this person, because of demon power, so even though he drink <coughs> wine, eat meat, and engage in lust and all that, wanton lust, not just having a, a wife or a husband, Wantonless meaning just random, meaning no good, all the time, any time. So, so this is no good. The power of the demon will keep his followers from doubting or denouncing him even. After the ghost has possessed him for a long time, he may even consume excrement and urine, or meat and wine, claiming that all such things are empty anyway. Whew. He will break the Buddha's moral precepts and mislead people into committing offenses. Like in proper Samadhi, he will certainly fall. He fell already. He fell already. Yeah? Not I certainly fall, but he fell already. Further, in, if, you know, if he continues with this state, further in this state of Samadhi, the good person sees the disintegration of the form skanda and understand the feeling skanda. He savors the state of illusory clarity, and it deeply enters his mind and bones, become his nature then. Boundless love may suddenly well forth from his mind. When that love becomes extreme, he goes insane with greed and lust. The Buddha don't mean love as as loving, 
but as uh, this kind of uh, sexual, you know, uh, attachment love, yeah? In this world, we use everything, love, love, love. It's all confusing, yeah? But the Buddha means bodily attachment, yeah? And that's why if it's become more extreme, then he goes insane with greed and lust. He cannot stop. So but this state is called when an agreeable state of somebody enter one's mind, lacking the wisdom to control oneself and mistakenly engaging in lustful behavior. Okay. If he understands that it's just one of the states, okay, then it will pass. Then there is no error. This experience does not indicate sexual. Of course not. <laughs> How can you are sage if you still have greed and lust? But if he considers himself a sage, then a demon of desire will enter his mind. Oh God, so many demons. When we will even see any bodhisattva enter somebody's mind and help something? <laughs> I want to turn the table. Yeah, really. Just demons all the time is no fun. Uh, the Buddha and Bodhisattva, why are they so gentle? Why don't they just do something? Turn the table, huh? Oh, man, I have to look into this. I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> I really don't like it. That's not fair. I don't like it that the Buddha has to suffer so much life after life, kaupas after kaupas, so that he can just save a handful of his disciples like that and still be in slanders still being doubted. I don't like that. Never mind if this is all illusion or life after life, illusion or not, never mind. It is still suffering. He still has to carry on the flesh body. And when you have the flesh, you suffer. Huh? He even has to become animals or insects even. Like I told you the story about the gecko and all that. Uh. And then the demon of desire will enter his mind, then he will become an outspoken, advocate of lust, calling it the way to body, body. Oh, man, you know one of them are like that. Not, not long ago, no? some years ago. Yeah, advocate lust, for sure. That is true. I saw it printed. His preaching about lustful encouragement uh, printed on newspaper. It's printed like that. Yeah, I was surprised, you know, but a lot, a lot of people follow him, and they worship him. Oh, I heard many stories. It was really true, eh? You know that. Right? Yeah, yeah. So many people. If you think I have a lot of followers, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's just, it just uh, one centimeter what I have as followers compared to one meter long or two, three, ten meters. It's very appealing to very appealing. Yeah. They calling each other, come here, come and have a look, come and listen here. <laughs> they selling things, they go there, you know, selling their house and stuff. You go there to listen. <laughs> I went all over the world and <laughs> look at how many I have. <laughs> Don't even have a house <laughs> for you. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> okay. If that was so easy, yeah? I'm too strict, you know? Must be vegan, huh? Must meditate two and a half hours, huh? Must keep the five precepts, yeah? Who like that? <laughs> How many people want to, to follow a woman who asks them to do this kind of thing against their own habit and nature? So don't, don't, don't compare me to other masters. I don't have a lot of disciples, for sure. I don't need, I don't care. <laughs> if you're my disciple, so-called disciple, you must meditate, <laughs> eat vegan, five precepts, and that is that. <laughs> no bargain, okay? okay. Yeah. <laughs> if you're my disciple, so-called disciple, you must meditate, <laughs> eat vegan, five precepts, and that is that. <laughs> no bargain, okay? okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Chonkapa. <laughs> <Okay>. Precepts. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> Somebody called me Chongkapa when I was uh, no, I did, wasn't a monk. I was just, uh, you know, going from one ashram to another. I'm just wearing Punjabi white. Just I have uh, two, three pairs of clothes. That's all, white clothes, you know, and long hair, and it's like everybody. And they keep calling me Chongkapa <laughs> always. Hey, Chongkapa. <laughs> How are you, Chongkapa? I did, at that time, I had no idea who Chongkapa was. I said, who? Chong who? <laughs> I said, my name is so-and-so at that time, yeah? And Chongka who? <laughs> I wasn't studying Tibetan Buddhism at that time. Huh? I don't know what he's on You don't know? No, oh, okay, okay. He was the, um, the founder of Gelukpa, of Geluk. Geluk uh, school in Tibet. Chongkapa was a lama, uh, the, the founder of Geluk school. The Geluk school is the one that wear yellow hat, and he was the one who strictly followed the precept. And he teach his monks and his lay disciples, they have to follow the Buddha precept strictly. He's the one that very, very strict. No meat, no wine, no married, no woman, no violating any precept at all, yeah? Not even eat garlic, onion, all that. Very strict, uh, Chongkapa, okay? And uh, he's supposed to be the first Dalai Lama, but he doesn't want. And people wanted him to be king of Tibet. He also did not want, but he's a king of Tibet in people's heart. And he's a Dalai Lama of all the Dalai Lama. He's a real monk. Yeah, uh, because he wants to revive the Buddhist tradition in Tibet. Yes, so uh, there are many tradition in Tibet. Yeah, Tibetan Buddhism. Yeah. Some yellow hat, red hat. There are different tradition. Some tradition maybe you could also marry. Yeah, maybe like that. Therefore, he said, no, no, A monk, no marry, no woman, no wine, no meat. Yeah, so he's the one that's famous for very strictly adhering to the precepts of the Buddha, very famous for that. I knew it only afterward, after they keep calling me Chongkapa <laughs> many times. I go to the Tibetan uh, library and asking, who is Chongkapa? <laughs> and uh, they also don't know very much, but there's a book. <laughs> Tibetan monk, you know, you go and look, and there were some in English. So then I learned about that. I don't know much more, okay? That's all I knew, that he is very strict with precepts. Yeah, other tradition, uh, other lama or dalai I don't hear about this uh, strict precept. Only Chongkapa was very strict, okay? He's supposed to be the first Dalai Lama, but his successor become official Dalai Lama, mean the ocean of wisdom. Okay? Thank you, Master. You're welcome. <laughs> I was just joking when I said I'm Chongkapa because I'm also very strict, you know. At least five precepts, yeah? Five precepts is the parents of all other precepts, yeah? Because if you don't kill, then of course you become vegetarian or vegan, no? Vegan, huh? If you don't tell lie, then you would not slander other people because you don't know if it's true or not, yeah? And you keep quiet because you, everyone is Buddha, you don't want to slander him, yeah? Many other precepts, the five precepts, and further on is the ten precepts for the other high a little bit, but five precepts, good enough. If you keep the five precepts as a lay people, that's okay already. And be vegan, meditate, okay? Be good, be compassionate, helping others, whatever you can. That's all I ask, nothing else. Yeah. I don't take any money from you. I don't take anything from you, and you know that. So at least you are no harm in my hands, okay? <laughs> in my teaching, you have no harm, no, no loss, nothing. Hmm? So... Hmm. Boundless love. This is not a very good translation, meaning some uh, overflowing kind of desire for physical 
love. That should be a better translation, okay? But maybe for lack of words, the translator use boundless love. Normally we use boundless love in, in connection with God or Buddha or saint, yeah? This is not the love that it meant. Otherwise, he wouldn't say he goes insane with greed and lust. So it's, it's a not a good translation. So I just want to tell you, boundless love in here is not correct, okay? So this state is called when an agreeable state of samadhi enters one's mind, lacking the wisdom to control oneself and mistakenly engaging in lustful behavior. Yeah, we went a little bit astray because I remember the incident. I remember that person. Yeah, because he truly did not mean to cheat anybody. Yeah, but this experience does not indicate sagehood. Yeah, not only he himself may be engaging in lustful behavior, but he encouraged and he praised it, and he even slandered those uh, priests and monks, saying because their lack of sex, therefore they are like this, they are like that. They don't know what to say. They, kind of not worthy or not intelligent. That's the way he talked about other priests and monks. You understand? Yes. Maybe you like sex or whatever, fine, but why you have to slander somebody who doesn't want to have sex? Yes. There is no sin, there's no stupidity in, in avoiding physical contact with woman or man. No sin in it is there, no harm in anyone. Why slander them? That was my question when I read these articles. I could not believe my eyes. And yet so famous, so waka, so limitless disciples everywhere. And big house, a lot of cars. I have to not much because <laughs> I want to save my money for people who need, you know, and for SMTV, for other things, yeah? I don't think I am stingy, okay? <laughs> Nothing is mine, really. It's all yours. It's all yours. <laughs> I only use what I have to do. I only do what I have to do. Wearing all this stuff, or makeup, all this, it's not my idea. I don't like it. <laughs> it's too much time consuming and troublesome. Not free enough, but never mind. I do what I have to, okay? Yeah, you even have to become prostitute if you want to save sentient beings. So for me, just a little lipstick, a high heel, it's okay, it's bearable. I complain, but it's bearable, okay? At least I look pretty to you, oh woman. <laughs> now, what I'm saying, so really, truly, this state exists, huh? Oh, there's a very high state already. Imagine you go through so many states, and so many demons before you can arrive here. And then the demon of lust and greed catch you. Oh, God. Oh, please protect all beings. We could never get out. <laughs> if there's not a mercy from God or, or saints, we could never get out. Don't you think so? Yeah. Never, Con. Never. Get out. never. No. You already so high here. See all the scandal, the soul, everything is illusion, knowing this, nothing, and still fall into this emptiness and desire stuff and doing wrong thing and leading hundreds of thousands or I don't know, millions into wrong thing and slander the, the virtuous and moral people. That is the worst thing that you could do. Maybe you fall into your lustful desire state yourself, okay, but not slandering the morally sound and, and virtuous monks and nuns and priests. That is no good. That is terrible. That will earn you hell for a long time. I wish, I hope the Buddha be mercy and save those people who are misled at least. <sighs> When I was in Europe, I, I want to buy land. Uh, those are years, yeah, I keep looking everywhere, but nothing really uh, suitable. Maybe it's not the time, maybe not meant to be. And then I uh, asked the, the people, you know, the, those monks and nuns who take care of the money department, I say, how much do we have? <laughs> how much money do we have before we go looking <laughs> for land? <laughs> I don't want, 
<laughs> I don't, I don't want to borrow money. I pay for what I want, and if I don't have money, I just don't buy. Very simple philosophy, right? Even for you, if I don't have, I don't buy. Yeah, I don't want to borrow. If I die tomorrow, I will own a debt, then I have to come back be a master again. Oh, God forbid! <laughs> Anything but not that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you have been a master all the time, you can't be anything else except some kind of master. Remember, I take my vow, like I will save all my. Uh, I say, even if I'm born as a human, although very suffering and the life is n nothing good here for me, but much still much better than beings who fall into hell and suffer every day, every second. So if I have any merit at all at that time, yeah, my two monks and nuns, teacher tell me to make a wish. I say if I have any merit at all from now, past life or in the future, I will give it all to those the worst suffering beings, and then I can be reborn again and human as long as I can be a human again, and I earn more merit. You know, just don't put me in hell because I cannot earn any merit there. <laughs> just let me come back to become a human, even though human life is nothing interesting, is suffering, but still better than being in be hell like other people. So I I can share my merit, whatever I have to those people, to the being, the worst one, the worst suffering people, and then all the incense girl. Remember that? Yes. Yeah. If I knew what it is, I probably did not. <laughs> no, no, I, I should have known. You know, my soul knows. That's what I'm saying. If you practice spiritually, even if you were reborn again as an ignorant woman, you will not lose it. Otherwise, why would a girl, twenty something years old, you know, seriously in front of the Buddhas and the monks' teachers, make such a vow like that? Yeah? Why? Nobody teach me that. It's just natural because I had those seeds in a former life. That's why I make such a wish. And normally you would wish, okay, I have a good husband, or, <laughs> you know, be rich, or at least something, huh? or maybe uh, help me to uh, be enlightened, at least, you know, something like that. But no, I want to give all my merit to the most suffering people, uh, most suffering being, and and content to be reborn again as human. So that you know, all the merit will be given away. So if I have not studied before somehow, some uh, with some enlightened master or being a master or something to do with that, I would have never come to this thinking to make a wish like that, right? It's logical, right? Yeah, I only met the monks a few weeks before that. And I only read Amitabha Sutra or Kwan Yin Bodhisattva. I, was, I have not even been given this sutra yet. I wasn't worthy <laughs> to be reading this. Yeah, my, my teachers say that. Uh, it's very good. They subdue my ego. Yeah? They praise me that, oh, I want to be a Buddhist. This is very good. You have good merit in the past, for sure. But still, on the other hand, they put me down. You are not worthy to, to see this sutra yet. They give me some small uh, medicine Buddha, you know, some very harmless and simple. Oh, Kwan Yin Bodhisattva, if you recite her name, uh, she protect you, something like that. But this one, no. After a while, she gave me Kristikapa Sutra, you know, the Buddha that uh, stay in the hell, but not this one, no. <laughs> after a long time. So at that time, nobody teach me anything about dedicated merit to the other suffer being. So it must have been the seed from former life. Yeah? That's why I told you, if you practice now and you're humble enough and you just don't uh, think you are sage, then even if you die and you have not reached uh, the complete uh, liberation, you still have the seed in you and you continue being a good human yeah? or being a charitable person and earning more merit and then continue your path. Yeah? Mm. But I don't want to let that happen to you. <laughs> Even if you're low or high, you go up first. <laughs> don't, don't stay here. No. <laughs> because if you get out of this, even if you're in astral or second level, 
it's easier to find master there, you know, because you already learned something with me. So you are not just a nobody. They will let you enter in this meditation hall, that lecture hall, to listen to other masters, even if I'm not there. But I will not leave you. Of course I will not leave you. I will continue teaching you. Thank you. All right, then. So if uh, this experience, you know, of uh, lacking wisdom to control and mistakenly engaging in lustful behavior, so he's just mistakenly thinking that he's good, and the demon, I guess, you know, oppressing his mind, make him do this, yeah. But if he does consider himself a sage, then a demon of desire will enter his mind. Yeah, he will become outspoken advocate of lust and all that. There, you know, it, it was really, oh, so my God, an obvious example of this state. The guy just mistaken and being controlled because he could not have enough wisdom to control himself. So it say here, lacking the wisdom to control oneself and mistakenly engaging, mistakenly only. But because of that, even have to go to hell, believe it or not. Oh, the Maya, they are mostly more after these practitioners, any practitioner, because they don't want them to become Buddha. They don't want them to attain the stage that they could be powerful enough to save him, well, even one more soul, not to talk about save a lot of souls. Yeah, it's to be pity, actually. You know, whoever that was, just a victim. Yeah, he could have continued further. But the problem is that when you attain a little bit of something, and maybe you have some light or you have some wisdom, some eloquence, then the other people come. Bravo! And they worship you, they touch your feet, they boost your ego, and then you, you cannot get out anymore because you have to continue talking to them and satisfy their, their you know, desire to want to listen to you. For example, like that, and this is a trouble. Mm. And especially if you talk like just the way they want, you know, uh, no need to do anything, no need to eat vegetarian, no need to meditate. Everything is all empty. Yeah, uh, no sin, no merit, nothing. Okay, but then he will teach this person eh, who has been possessed by the demon of desire. He will teach his lay followers to indiscriminately engage in acts of lust. He even does that, yeah? teach his followers to engage in all kinds of, of uh, lustful, calling those who commit acts of lust hairs to his teachings even, encouraging them. He's so blindfolded by the maya, you know, by the demon, that's the problem. So the power of spirits and ghosts in the ending age will enable him to attract a following of ordinary, naive people, numbering 100, 200, 500, or 600, or as many as 1,000 or 10,000. More than that. At that time, the Indian population is small, <laughs> so the Buddha cannot think that it should be many fold than 10,000. Yeah. When the demon becomes bored, it will leave the person's body. Once the person's charisma is gone, he will run afoul of the law. He will mislead living beings so that they fall into the relentless hells. Lacking proper samadhi, he will certainly fall. Fail already. Ananda, all ten of these states may occur in Diana as one's mental effort interacts with the feeling skanda. Dull and confused living beings do not evaluate themselves. Encountering such situations in their confusion, they fail to recognize them and say that they have become sages, thereby uttering a great lie, they will fall into the relentless hell. In the Dharma ending age, after my nirvana, all of you should pass on the Tathagata's teachings, so that all living beings can awaken to their meaning. Do not let the demons of the heavens have their way. 
offer protection so that all can realize the unsurpassed way. Okay, there are more stages of uh, enlightenment and cultivation after this. So the Buddha has just finished all the uh, explanation about the traps and the demons who are not really good at all for any practitioners, the vulnerable one without teachers. Yeah. That's why the, that the person who, who encourages yeah, people to have lustful action always say he has no teacher. He don't need any teacher. He himself, always a teacher, being a teacher, never a student. Yeah. He say he's never a student. He has many teachers, but he, he is never a student. You know, yeah. So there are more, but uh, uh, there are 60 levels of sagehood even. Yeah, yeah that's his the following, okay? So many, so many. Yeah. There are still demonic influence during all the sixty stage, so we will never finish, huh? <laughs> yeah. We should really thank the past masters, monks and nuns and scholars who had take time to record the Buddha's teaching after the Master's Nirvana. And also for the past and present persons, lay or monks or nuns, who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health or under any difficult situation to translate this so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present, and future. May their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you. Okay, I will stop for now. We can just chat, or you may ask me any question you want. Okay? We continue next time, huh? If you stay, then maybe I will continue to read, 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 read. Any question? Yeah. Earlier, when you told me uh, that on a level that my doubt was good, mm. and I wanted to tell you that that's why my doubt is comforted mm. because I don't feel dogma. You know, mm. I, I was a seeker for my whole life. I went mm. through many different religions and through mm. many different churches. And, and the thing that always pushed me away the most was not feeling like I could ask questions, not oh. feeling like I could think for myself and wonder. And, you know, and when you said that to me, and also it's not the first time you've said similar things in your books and your other lectures. And mm. those are the things that drew me to you the most mm. and made me feel the most comfortable when the doubting mind speaks, it's mm. that kind of answer that makes me feel like I really belong here as mm. part of your family. And I just wanted to, again, express my appreciation for that. Okay. So thank you. <laughs> uh, good for you. Good for you. Yes. Your doubt is truly sincere, not like to provoke me or to put me down or degrade in me or anything. That's why I feel good about your doubt. Yeah, uh, if somebody else have different doubts, you know, like trying to make himself look uh, smart in front of me, and uh, like uh, like put me down in front of other people and all that, which is no good for him, karma bad. Then I would scold him instead of <laughs> uh, welcoming like you. Doubts and doubts are different. Okay, you are doubting whether or not I teach you the right thing or not, whether or not you follow the right person because you sincerely want to really find a master, find a way to be liberated. That is different. A spiritual doubt is always welcome. It's very healthy, not personal attack. That is different, okay? <laughs> Why are you crying again? <laughs> you inspire me and make me feel so right. Yeah? I just hear 
It's a good crying. It's yeah, it's good, good. <laughs> All right, good. Thank you. Can you can cry. Can you touch? Yeah. Yeah, you, it you touched. Feel, That's yeah. the word. Thank you. You feel uh, you feel like uh, you're correct. Yeah, <laughs> it's good. That is a different doubt, and it's a different from slander or trying to to look cool in front of uh, others and, and uh, like putting your master down, uh, personal attack. That's different. But this is pure spiritual doubt. This is your birthright. And you must doubt. You must doubt until you really completely prove it, that what you are doing, what the path you're following is correct for you, because you have only this chance. If you follow the wrong master, you must know it, then you have to quit. You, you still have a chance to go find another master. You must doubt. Your time is precious. Your life is yours. You can't afford to just cut hold to anybody and okay, do whatever she, he said. And it's your life. It's very important. It's your precious life, your valuable time. You must doubt until you resolve it, okay? If no doubt, then you can never understand you follow the true or not true, yeah? You must have doubt. You must have enough intelligence and wisdom to discern this. Otherwise, you can never put your whole heart into what you're following, I mean, the teaching. So it's just different from degrading or slandering, the ego stuff. Yeah, it's different. All right, good. <laughs> I'm proud of you. <laughs> Here, I have an apple juice <laughs> as a reward. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Master, if it's possible to, uh, to you, uh, change the rule of the Maya. Change yes. the rule of the Maya of, in this world. Because many Masters are coming save some souls, but I think he, they cannot change the rules of the Maya. If it's possible to you, Master, change, change those the rules? rules? I don't know. <laughs> I think so, because... I have not tried. I don't know yet. I'm just fighting. <laughs> I don't know if we can change. But at least we have something good. We have peace, many peace nowadays. It's just newly peace in Yemen, yeah? Yeah. Then we have a whole piece, one piece after another these days, I'm happy, yeah? Okay? And you are vegans, yeah, at least how many lives suffering saved, okay? At least that. And furthermore, I cannot uh, promise, I also don't know if I'm big shot or anything. I try. I'm just angry with Maya, and I argue with him all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I don't think he can beat me in argument, because I, I'm right. Yeah. We know. We know Master. <laughs> I'm not like arrogant or anything. What I mean is, I, what I say is logical. How can anybody put somebody in hell to suffer relentlessly just because he mistaken that he's a Buddha. He didn't do anything on purpose, yeah? It's just a Maya influenced him, and he, and he has never had such a blissful state before in his life, or any other life, yeah? Somehow he's lucky enough to reach there. So if he mistakenly thinking he's a Buddha or he has reached God, is it no sin, is there? No, no. Well, unless he misleads somebody else doing something bad, like advocating for lust or steal or greed, then it's no good, of course. But the other state before that, they do nothing wrong, for example, then still go to hell. This is nonsense. This is a blind revenge. It's nothing good. So I don't know if I can change completely the rules, yeah? Because also because maybe I don't have enough support from humans. Yeah? If people believe what I'm saying, then I have more support. But not all of them do. Some of them even not just reject, but slander and making more trouble for me. And the Maya was like, you see? See? Nobody have respect for your view. <laughs> just like uh, Buddha say, I can live forever. Ananda say nothing. He's foremost closest associate disciple, every day with him. And many lifetime also, not just this lifetime, the Buddha always with Ananda, even when he was uh, uh, animals, or just a normal merchant or something, uh, Ananda always nearby do something with him. Yeah. 
Uh, even one time, um, Ananda was a king, and the Buddha was an elephant, and then that elephant also will come to Ananda. For example, they're always together. Even then, uh, he had not awakened enough to say, Buddha, then please stay. Yeah. And then the Maya comes, see, nobody wants you. Even your foremost disciple, he did not express his desire to, to want you be here. Maybe because he doesn't want to continue to be your attendant and serving you forever. Uh, Maya, talk anything. Maya can lie even. Oh, I scold him endlessly. You have, have no idea. I scold him a lot. I say, you liar. <laughs> yeah, he tried to make trouble. Tell me lies. A lot of lies. And sometimes uh, using the name of some heavenly being to tell me stuff. But I know, I know. I scold him a lot all the time. I say, this is really petty. This is below even Maya's dignity. I don't do this again. You know, in my eyes, you are just worse than dust because you tell lies. Yeah. Yeah, there's no end to this Maya stuff. Yeah. I don't know why he had to resort to lying to me. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? Uh, okay. Tell me. La maestra dijo que necesitaba soporte para que quizás pueda cambiar las, las reglas del maya. Entonces quiero preguntar a la maestra si, si quizás no tenga tanto soporte, pero con algunas almas eh, sinceras es suficiente como para que la maestra pueda cambiar las reglas del maya por el bien de las futuras generaciones. Okay. She's asking if uh, you don't have enough support of the humans to change the rules of the Maya, mm -hmm. but if you have enough uh, sincere, um, uh, a few, a few sincere, a few sincere, uh, sincere uh, supporters to, to, to support you. Do I have? Yes, yes. yes Master. <laughs> oh, look at Master. Yes, Master. <laughs> if it's enough, si suficientes. <laughs> oh, gracias. Master. I'm not sure. Okay. No, it's a girl. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Of course I want that, yeah? But uh, I'm not sure how is it going to be, okay? All right, come here, brother. From, your, from your teaching before, yes. I've learned from you that, uh, like I said, I've read the Bible many times. But I didn't fully grasp it, yeah. digest the meaning of it. Mm. But when I listened to you uh, explain the sutras and some of the things that you've said about the Bible mm. earlier, I did not get the connection. Mm. But now I can get the connections oh. from all of the things that you said and Good. the relationship like you and Christ Jesus. Mm. And people don't see the real connection. No, they that like you, like you have. Yes, I do. Oh. For example, Jesus said that I'm going to prepare a place for you. He yeah. said that to his disciples in oh. my father's house in many abodes. Oh, yes. He and did. so when you tell us that you're taking us to up above the fifth level, mm. it's the same thing. You oh, are preparing. Oh, I forgot he said that also, didn't he? Yes, yes. It's the same he thing. You're preparing that, huh? a place for us. Oh, and yes, so, he did. And he, he said, where I will be, you will be with me always. Oh, yes, he did, right? Yeah. And the same thing. I so you we remember know. everything. I don't remember all this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we know that we will always be with you. I remember now that I know that. It's just that it didn't occur to me. Just now when you told me, I remember I read those. And the same way uh, you are fighting with Maya mm. for us, mm. Christ said the same thing. He uh, told his disciples that, that he prayed for them. Mm. He interceded with them because they were weak. Yes. And so he had to protect them. That they wanted to take them and sift them as with weak. Yes. But he spared them, mm -hmm. leave them alone, or give them some break, or mm -hmm. give them some leeway. Mm -hmm. And so you're the same way with what you're saying to us now that uh, you don't like what's going on yes. in, uh, in this level of heaven mm. the, where you have to reap what you sow because it's, it's too tough. Yeah. Christ said the same thing, yeah. that it's impossible for us. 
Impossible. The he way said I it's see impossible, it. yes. but God, with God, yes. all things are possible. That's right. That's right. If no God, we we just don't. If it's not God's grace, we are doomed forever. And I've seen the way that Christ got angry at all of the things that were going on when he went in the temple. And he, was, he was very angry. Yeah. And so I, I look at the comparison. Like, for example, Christ said he sent a comforter. Yeah. And so uh, you're the comforter. Oh, you're sure. <laughs> you are taking us up and you are helping us to get in place. I would like to, of course. <laughs> I see all of the things and... and it's, it's just become amazing to me, and we are so happy that you are fighting for us. I'm happy too. Thank you. He makes it also more clear, right? Yeah. I, I did not remember all that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, now that you tell me. I was also a very hot temper when I was younger. I was uh, just a newly nun, you know, not nobody yet, okay? I went to a temple. Mm, because there was a nun who lives there. Uh, one of uh, your sisters have a mother who became a nun and stay at home there. And next to her home, there's a real temple. And the, one of the nuns is the abbess of that temple. Well, that is just no, no concern with her. Yeah. So I, of course I went there to see them, huh? just because um, your sister, your Spiritual uh, sister took me there, yeah, just to stay for a few days. I had no home then. <laughs> there. And then in the morning I went out, I saw some men, you know. He's all with short, you know, no dressing. He went uh, in front of the, the Buddha, like the Buddha statue is here, yeah. He stands right in front of the Buddha, not inside the 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 altar place, but outside in the balcony, in front of Buddha, and he do this kind of, uh, I don't know, indecent kind of uh, exercise. He just exercise, of course. It's none of my business, but I was very angry. I go and scold him. I say, you get out. You cannot do this in front of the Buddha. You bad man, bad. You have to respect the Buddha. You can do this, you know, like, like those uh, grinding and uh, whining, <laughs> this kind of, and then uh, in a short, you know, <laughs> I say, if you come to the Buddha temple, you must wear clothes. You cannot do this. <laughs> I scold him so loud. And he say, is it your temple? I say, I don't care whose temple. It's the Buddha's temple. <laughs> and I use a stick. I had a stick to walk at that time. I say, you go before I beat you up. <laughs> what kind of nun, you know? Not even one meter fifty. Got a stick and and the man is big because he exercise, you know, he's big and muscle. I say, you get out now before I beat you up. And I chase him out of there. Don't come back again, huh? <laughs> very bad temper. Oh. But I feel is this very disrespectful of him. There's so many places you, you can exercise, huh? You don't go in front of the Buddha altar, huh? And, and and then this and that, and we're just a, a little short on you, or nothing else. No. <laughs> Bad temper, must. <laughs> and he was scared of me, believe it or not. <laughs> I'm small, but I was angry. And he can feel it, he can feel my energy. <laughs> so he go away fast, yeah. I think if one of your sisters here, she, she will <laughs> tell you, is it true? You know? And maybe some other thing I forgot. Mm. Some other thing. Mm. Okay. Ah. It was a real temple, small temple, but there are Buddhas, many Buddhas in there. The altar, and he stand right in front of the main entrance to the altar and just a week wake himself like that. <sighs> Hello, Master. Hello. Because I'm preparing a vegan restaurant, and there are a lot of pressure, and I'm afraid it won't be good. And I hope the master can give me some encouragement. Yes, I'm going to do it. 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 
做好事就不用夸，也不用要求了，无条件啊。Next one. Yeah. Hello, Master. My、mm. question is related to yeah, yeah, what Fred was talking about with the abode that you created, this place that you created above the fifth level. Oh, above fifth level. Yeah, and the question is: Are the generations that are also liberated are they going to be able to go to this place? Yeah, if if you sincerely practice. <laughs> okay. And then you can go higher. If not, then you still stay within the fifth level, and then go slow later.、Mm. And our relatives,、mm. our, our generations, our previous generations, are they? Other generation? Yeah. No, the generation. I think they just stay. Okay. In the fifth level, that's good enough already. Liberated, but not、okay. always have to go all the way with you.、Mm? Okay. Thank you, Master. There are different price to pay. <laughs> okay. You practice very hard. Okay. And you earn it, yeah. And you direct descendant. I mean, disciple.、Uh, direct bloodline. They are the the byproduct of your merit. Okay. So if they stay in the five world and liberate it, is okay already. Yeah. When you go up to the fifth level, even or even、uh, to my place, yeah. You will not think any more about relatives and friends. You're completely free from any emotion. If they are there, okay. If they're not there, we are all relatives and friends. Okay. Over there, we will not think individual relationship anymore. We are different. We are saints. We are Buddha. Huh? Do you think the Buddha think of his wife when he in Nirvana? <laughs> no. Okay. You feel different. You behave different. It's just natural that you are free from any attachment of anything. Yeah. If your wife or your parents practice with you, then of course they can also come up there, huh? But if not, they will stay above the three world. Okay. Meaning liberated. Yeah. Forever.、Mm. Yeah. But maybe they don't go there immediately to the fourth or the fifth. They have to wait somewhere. But they will go there eventually, but they're not necessarily coming with you, huh? Because maybe they don't have faith in me. I cannot force them.、Hmm? Thank you, Master. Because of your merit and because of Master Grace, of course, they will be helped, yeah. But I cannot force them to say, "Oh, you got to believe in me, so I can take you to my land," huh? Yeah, uninvited guest has to be willing. And lie to come to the host house. If they don't lie, then you can force the guests to come, even if you like to.、Hmm? But you can help because they are your your friends' relatives. Then of course, maybe you let them come nearby or something. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Master.、Um, all my life, I've str- I've struggled with the that chronic depression. And、um, why? What happened? What's wrong with your life? It's been like that since I was born. It was. I mean, I've I've always had it. Oh, you always had it. I know it's probably karma or destiny or whatever, but.、Mm. But only,、uh, how about your life? Come here, come here. This is the microphone echo to me. I when I look at you, maybe I understand better.、Mm. Okay, tell me now. What is with your life that make you depressed? Is any reason? I I can't answer that. It's I mean they've said it's biochemical. I've been to every doctor. I've been on various medications. Biochemical? Yeah. Oh, you have something wrong with the blood? They they've prescribed all kinds of medicines. I mean. Does it help you? It manages the symptoms, but it doesn't get rid of the depression. Uh huh. And the only time it goes away is. Later in life, when I found you, when I meditate or I'm looking at your picture or listening to your lectures,、mm-hmm. but I can't do that 24/7. And no, no, I, nobody. Cares. I got to be out in the world sometimes. So yeah. How is I, your family doing? Um, my father's you, passed, and my mother's getting older, but she's she's. Are you、alone. alone? Yeah. You don't have wife. Two dogs. Two dogs. And the dogs don't make you happy. Yeah, they make me happy. <laughs> they make me happy. Okay. But I guess my question is: Is, is this will Kuan Yin? I mean, will this? I know that's not the purpose of Kuan Yin, but will、mm. it 
eventually go away, or is that my destiny for this? It will, if you patient a little bit. How long ago you initiated? 2003. Wow, 15 years. It's gotten a lot better since then, but I still t- take a lot of medication for it. Oh, are you sure you need a lot of medication? Do you feel, you feel confident that this medication helps you? A lot. I mean, yes. Um, it, it's a lot less than I used to have to take. Uh, less medication or less depression? Both. I mean, less medication than I used to have to take. Uh-huh. So the depression's less, but if I go off the medication, the depression then comes it might right come back. back again. You don't know the cause of your depression? I've been to every doctor, talked out everything. They say it's biochemical. Since when did you have it? Since I was little. Huh. Anybody have such a case in the world? Yeah. They do? Yeah. Oh, man, that's really sad. That's really sad, brother. I am so sorry. Can I give you a hug, maybe? Please. <laughs> to do for you. I will give you a You try so hard. Can you feel it for you? Give it up to me. Huh? Feel yourself. You're the only one who can feel yourself. Hmm? Right, right, right. Are you financially okay? Does your mother nag you or something? No. It's uh, inherently like that. I'm sorry, brother. You're so handsome. Maybe you find a girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> you had a girlfriend, but didn't, didn't help. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what to do? Hmm? But you know what? You know what? I'm happy that you're still here. Mm. That's the best thing already. Yeah, some people cannot deal with this kind of depression. They might have been gone, taken their life or something, you know? And you're so courageous. You live on. With all this must be a big burden for you. Just give it to me. Don't take it. Don't keep it, okay? Give, 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 give. Give all of that. (laughs) You're so good looking. And so brave, my God. Really, you are brave. Because if I had such a depression since I was young, like that, I'm not sure if I survived until now. How you do that? How did you do that? I just know that death wasn't going to be the answer. Yeah, That's true. the only thing I Wonderful. Can... At least you have wisdom, man. <laughs> You're cool, okay? Sorry that you have to suffer so much. This is where a lot of people suffer. I don't know why I, I told you. I told you I hate it, yeah? Mm. Live on so that we, maybe one day we'll find a solution. Yeah? You. Yes, you want to ask something? Sure. So uh, Maya is imp- imp- implementing all the rules and uh, heaven doesn't interfere as a benefit of doubt. Is that because the rules should be enforced whether the sin is accurate or not? Uh, heaven uh, also fighting with the, the astral level sometimes, but sometimes they win, sometimes they're not. So heaven will be, should be enforcing the modification of rules, right, Master? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. So, but this world belongs to Maya, that's why. Everybody, many people like the Maya. Yeah, right. They support his way of life. They don't support me. Huh? Yes, they, don't, they did not support Jesus. They did not support the Buddha. I mean, some, but not the whole world, not even the whole India support the Buddha. Right, the population is so much and the disciples are disciples should grow more and sincerity should increase. It is not all their fault. It's not, not that they are not sincere, not that they don't meditate. They, they do all their might already. They have to have to work, they have to take care of parents, wife, kids. Friends, you know, society, right. job, everything already. And they go out sometimes to help, to do charity work. They do too many things already. Not that they don't do. It's just the Maya is bad. 
Uh, you know, this world is like that. If we keep tracking it, then we cannot, we cannot stop. <laughs> it will be forever. I'm just angry. Yes. Yeah, I'm just angry even if the Maya is right, even if he's doing his job. I don't like it. That's, that's just my opinion, okay? Thank you, Master. But that doesn't mean my opinion can usurp his uh, authority. Not, not yet. Maybe, maybe later, maybe in the future. I cannot promise, okay? I'm just angry. I just want to do a revolution against him, but I don't know. I don't know, okay? Yes, Master. Not, not that I'm important. Uh, I just no, want to no, let no. you know. No, I'm leaving tomorrow morning. Oh, thank, yeah. you, thank you. It's a small world for whatever you did to all of us in this retreat. You gave like lotteries and lotteries mm -hmm. to all of us, like uh, bless, blessings and uh, after the ceremony, blessings mm -hmm. and uh, gift and everything. So thank you. It's a small world, Master. You're welcome, my Thank love. you. You're welcome. Uh, I wish I could. I just, I'm just too busy to figure out how to deal with this Maya. Okay. Mm. I don't know if I'm alone can do anything. The Buddha did not, could not. Uh, Jesus could not. Prophet, other prophet could not. I don't know if I can do anything. We will diligently support you, Master. Uh, I know that. I know that. I think you do your best already. No one else can be better supporters. Yeah, I feel frustrated that I cannot do what you wish. Uh, not, not immediately like that. <laughs> yeah. Master, it's been a privilege and an honor to be here this week for the first time from a Hare Krishna perspective. All the things you've been teaching, working with your disciples, they're a true example of how people should be on earth, as in heaven, so it should be on earth. The disciples you have here are an example to you. Mm. And the way you teach them, it's unconditional love. The way a parent raises a child. But the thing that's been so beautiful about this week, mm. this has been the best Christmas ever. My ego like that. <laughs> this, has been, this has been the best Christmas ever because we got the best gift ever. Yeah, you mean the gift? And the thing that was so beautiful about it, it was without asking. Mm. The mother sees what the child needs. The child may be naughty, the child may be obstinate, but the mother still, with love, takes care of that child. Cha, how you know? You just came one week. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I can be it, very it's, tough. It's just been absolutely wonderful to be with the God brothers and God sisters, and it's been really, really instructive. And the way everybody was trying to help everybody. Yeah. This is a family. That's a way this is should... love, and this is how the world needs to be. It's the only way the world is going to change. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> it's changing. This is changing. Yesterday the news, the peace, yeah? Yes. Peace news yes. in Yemen, that make me very pleased. <laughs> changing. Yes. No, it's changing. Yes. Again, there is, there is a, in Srimad Bhagavad Gita, there's a foretelling of the finishing of Kali Yuga, the Iron Age, mm. and the beginning of the Golden Age. Mm. And on Supreme Master Television, they've been talking about this. Mm. And it says the the incarnation that will come will simultaneously finish Kali Yuga, the Iron Age where we're in, and simultaneously start Sata Yuga. There is only one incarnation that's going to do this. And we all know who this is. It is the Supreme Master. Wow. Wow. In, in the Bhagavad Gita, they talk about the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Mm. And it says, once you recognize, or you can fully say with wholeheartedly, who the Supreme Personality of Godhead is, you will be delivered. And we all know in this room today, Supreme Master Ching Hai is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And may we all work as hard as we can to help her in the future. Thank you, Master. Thank you. Thank you. I hope I don't disappoint you. <laughs> I just want to... You said the Maya, but maybe he's good for something. <laughs>
Master, you can't disappoint us, and it doesn't matter about you can overthrow the rule of Maya because you, you fight for us, you defend us, you guide us, you advocate us, and I know I speak for so many people, that is so much, and we appreciate, and all the people who aren't your followers might not know to appreciate, but you know, you'd, you'd fight for them and you defend them too, and it's not what you can do, but it's what your intention is, and thank you for being you. Oh, wow, you all guys, you guys make my day. <laughs> I'm so glad, I'm so glad that, I'm so glad that, that at least I have some friends, <laughs> okay? I'm doing my best, you're doing your best. That's all we can do, huh? We are all trapped in here still, even though our soul is free. The time of initiation, you're free. It's still connected with the soul, with the... There's a cord connecting. When it's severe, then you're gone. Yeah, you still connected. We are free. Yeah, it's just we have to wait for the prison gate to open <laughs> to be completely free. It's just the process is going. Yeah, but then we are still trapped in here. No, mm. you know you're going to be out of prison, but we still need to stay here, abide. The, re the prison rules and all that, and it's really gruesome. Hmm? One day in prison, they say, it's like the 1,000 years outside, that's what they say. 1,000 years in freedom is equal to one day in prison. Hmm? The same with us here. Yeah. We know we are free, <laughs> but we have to wait for the procedure and all that, no? even then. I just don't like all these rules. Even if, even if it's, it's for training, you know, even if for training, for good purpose, like for the people being to train themselves to be good, to become a Buddha even. This is too gruesome, too, too taxing, you know, on any soul at all. And how can anyone ever make it? If it's not for God's grace or the Buddha's mercy, how can anybody ever make it? Look, it's a so much meditation, one stage after another, and still in, in the Maya trap, and could even go to hell for that. Who can even support this system? But the way that the world people behave, they're supporting it. They support alcoholism, they support Torturing the animals, all the huh? all the everything. I support all the bad things. Yeah, okay. All the vices, she said. Yeah, that means I support Maya. Maya making all this to seduce people, to entrap beings into the vicious circle of, you know, life and death and punishment, torture, hell, all that. Even Anybody would say, okay, hell is your own making, huh? it's illusion, but it's, it's really hell. You suffer just like you suffer here, except that you cannot escape, you cannot even die. This is terrible, terrible. If anyone on this planet really know what hell is, they would scare themselves to death, they would never dare to, to touch any meat, to touch any alcohol even, or to be, you know, ignorant of the truth. They would search all their might, all their life, with, with their life even, just to know how to liberate themselves. They just don't know. No one is allowed to know even what hell is like, except only some who has been there, and because of Buddha or Bodhisattva interference, are allowed to come back, to tell. Just like some people, a near-death experience, yeah? Not all of them come back, tell you. Just some are allowed to come back, to tell you the story of what the heaven is like. And these are just maybe astral heaven even. And they like it so much. It's some come back here just crying for weeks on end because they don't want to stay in this world. It's so suffering for them compared to that heaven that they have been to. Yes, brother. 
after master has uh, smashed the mind controlling engine uh, people uh, are receiving tremendous amount of energy onto the planet and now it is very very easy to make anybody vegan earlier we had to shout and tell them still they don't understand now people are going towards us towards organic diet and they're going to whole foods and all organic vegan diet and now the speed has increased uh, people are consciousness towards animals and everything the activity has increased tremendously in the last two years itself yeah even so, vietnam they protect animals now <laughs> right so so if if we go at this speed probably in the next five years maybe no more meat yeah here. that's correct master yes yeah who knows yes <laughs> thank you Also, our, our TV channel is getting popular, and I yeah. see a lot of a uh, lot of uh, telecasting companies are doing. And uh, compared to last two months and now, uh, New York Television, Long Island, Staten Island, Connecticut, every every ch channel is picking up Supreme Master TV. Mm -hmm. One day will come, and everybody will watch Supreme Master TV. Right. Correct. Gracias. Korea. 안녕하세요. 예, 안녕하세요. 2010년에 오게닉 비건 CRP를 설립을 했습니다. In 2010 he made a company named Organic Vegan. Organic Vegan. Yes. Oh, got it. 예. 이번 9월 달에 볼티모어 도시에서 네이처럴 프로덕스 엑스포가 있었습니다. 거기 첫 출품을 했습니다. This September he went to Baltimore and there was an organic food expo and he showed his product at there first time. 한국에 에, 유기 가공 식품 12개 대표 업체가 갔는데 거기서 유일하게 저희 오게닉 비건사가 아, 인정을 받았습니다. So, yeah, and there was 12 company from Korea organic company uh, only one company his company was uh, yeah selected accepted yeah wow congratulations yeah 그로 인하여서 미국 바이어들이 한국 저희 지방 정부에 요청하기를 아 미국 시장에 한국 유기 가공 식품이 올려거들랑 저희 유기농 비건을 앞세워서 본받고 오라고 어, 근본 6월과 7월에 초대를 받았습니다. The American buyer said to Korean local government, if you want to uh, come to American market, you should respect his yeah, standard and uh, follow him. Uh, follow yeah. his example of, of product, of producing product. Okay, very good. 이거는 스승님께서 어, 지구를 살릴 수 있는 솔루션은 오게닉과 앤 비건이라고 말씀하신 걸 실천하기 위해서였고 여기에 많은 분들도 거기에 출자를 하셨습니다. 그래서 이것은 이 회사는 저희들의 개인 회사가 아니라 우리 모두의 회사입니다. 그래서 어, 이것은 기쁜 소식이 되지 않을까 해서 지금 전해드리는 바입니다. 이상입니다. The reason why I made this company was your teaching that organic vegan is the solution to save the world. Ah. And many Koreans uh, donate for the establishing company. Ah. And uh, he thinks this is very good news to tell you. Ah, good news. Yes, of course. Good news. Thank you. Good news. Thank you, Amiga. And very good uh, motive because he want to save the world, not because of making money or to be famous, but want to save the world through vegan. Good motive, very noble. Kamsa Amita. If you have good motive, then uh, it is more likely to be a success, okay? Because it's easier for the angels or the gods or the divas to protect and help you. If you have a lower motive, then the Maya will make trouble. The angel and God cannot interfere because 
oil and water don't mix. Whatever you do must have pure motive. Then it's good excuses for the angels, the, the higher being, to support, to help you invisibly. That is the point. They help you. If, because if you are good, they are allowed to. If you are bad, then the Maya take over. It's not just even bad, but like not a very noble goal or motive. Then it's a good excuse for Maya <laughs> to help you <laughs> in different way. Yeah, you go astray. So there are two sides, left or right. Okay. Yeah. 在是在很长时间之前的事情，我。我在这个夜梦中看到了一个境界，就是咱们这个标记的问题。我在一个站台上，在一个站台上，天上发现了无数的横竖的光格，就是像探照灯那个光格一样，满天照着，很亮。哎，完了这光格过去了以后，我就看见这个你标记的 M M 那个，那个是那个。母船，船拖着这个万类的花朵，师傅，您就躺卧在躺卧在那万类花朵，向天下看大地的众生，我就还得搁那喊呢，我说师傅来啦，师傅来啦，赶快看着我一蹦起来了，一下我蹦醒了，我我都看不着了。<笑>你太激动了，才这样。他看到好的境界，然后太太激动，然后就醒过来了，是不是这样？啊，哎呀，以后不要那么激动，安静安静下来再继续看，啊，不要那么激动，要快醒过来，蹦起来。<笑> OK， 懂了懂了，恭喜嘛，没事，好好的，好体验。<笑> OK， you guys， you OK？ Not tired. Oh man, how is your body made of bricks or something? How you do this, actually? Oh man, really? Because you sit all day already. At least you sit some time, right? In the daytime, and in such a condition, windy, cold, and it's not like at home. You can lay down. There's no way you can lay down here unless you lay in, in the bosom of some of your brothers next door. There's no way you can lay down anywhere, right? Because we're even short of uh, indoor space, even. And you sit so tight together. How can you even sit all day, and uh, all evening already? And then she listen to this old woman <laughs> calendar stuff <laughs> and all the question, and you still. Uh, you look like you full of beans. <laughs> Did they feed you beans in the kitchen? <laughs> soya beans. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. She said soya beans. What I mean is, you look so radiant. You're smiling from ear to ear, and you just don't don't look tired at all. How? Love uh, cannot make you like this. <laughs> it's your love, it's your love. Huh? Really? It's your love. You worked very hard for this place, and you just came to see you. And the, your brothers and sister in Taiwan, they work really hard. They work very hard. Yeah, but you come here also very hard. Yeah. <laughs> and we thank the Taiwanese. Huh? And they work very hard. Yeah, they work very hard for it.、Uh, even though not、uh, as perfect, it just sometimes the ego interfere. Yeah, or the Maya interfere. I have high standard. Okay, <laughs> high, very high standard expectation of all of you, not just them. But I also appreciate that you come, and they're very happy that you come, because it's not easy. Or you also for you to come. You come from different place, yeah. Because、uh, I know you work very hard for your money, yeah, very hard, and your honest living, not like quick rich making. That's easier, but you work hard, really, every day of your life to save some money to come, yeah. And at home you have obligation. You see, if you didn't come here, maybe you could buy a flash car. 
<laughs> a better car to flash with the neighbors, you know. <laughs> but you know what is more important? I wish I could pay all for your tickets and everything else. <laughs> but it's good that you pay. It's good that you pay. Otherwise, everything is, I earn merit and you zero. And you can't come home with me. <laughs> I mean, the home that waiting for you, like Jesus say, I go prepare a place for you. Yeah. All the master, they prepare a place for their disciples. Yeah. If, if the real master, they have creative power. I mean, not just this lousy world like the Maya made was a high cut, zillion times so glorious and comfortable, and you like nothing and you desire nothing, you just feel happy. And then from there, you can even bless the world, yeah, because you're more powerful. Mm? Not just we enjoy, but we can bless the world. And we can come back here if we want, but full of equipment inside to protect yourself not to fall again and to help whoever you think you own a dead last life who helped you sincerely. But when you were in this world or the last life, you had not enough power or equipment or opportunity or financial or power to help. Mm? You look and you say, ah, my good friend there, I want to come down and take him up. And you have all the power and the master support behind to take that friend up. Yeah. That's a good thing. That's a good thing about it. You don't have to like come down to be a master or anything, but you come down with power to help whoever you think it was good for you. You have enough power to do that. Yeah? You don't have to be well-known or famous, or preacher, nothing. You just quietly go and help whom you wanted to help, and that's very beautiful. Yeah? Without so much ado, like being a master, and people who look at you, attack you, and you have to fear for your life. Without that, you just come down casually, you know, and just go in for a trip. <laughs> and then you take up whomever you like to. Okay? Good, huh? Yes. Good deal. I just wanted to say it's awesome news that you gave us about going beyond the fifth world and just unbelievable. And thank you so much, Master. Oh, you're welcome. How do you say you're welcome in Afrikaans? Yes, welcome. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, imagine we can understand each other, huh? There's so many languages here not to talk about in other countries, huh? Yeah, that's good. And we're happy with each other, yeah. <laughs> and it's been an awesome retreat, Master. Every night from the, the first time you spoke to us until even tonight, you've answered so many questions inside. Like every single question I had for the yeah. last two years inside, you've ans the first night you answered almost 90% of all of them. Gee, and gee. then the second night you answered even beyond. Beyond 100%? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a bonus, hey? Good yeah. for business. <laughs> And then, Master, just being in your presence, like, I mean, every time I see you, you just, you just become more and more and more and more powerful and loving and compassionate. Yeah? And, yeah. yeah. Powerful, man. Yeah. And, and, Master, what really, really, really touches my heart so deeply is that you are so tolerant with us and you're so forgiving and so you still give us so much invisible love on a, on a vibrational love yeah. That that words don't even do justice for us to be able to explain to you how grateful we are to you, Master, and mm. for everything you've done for us. It's okay, no problem. As long as you, <laughs> as long as you sincerely practice, do your best, okay, and I'll be happy. Yeah, that's Thank why you, you always come because you can't find any happiness no. with your boyfriend. Always come here. Yeah. <laughs> Master, you are my one true love. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, but if uh, another boyfriend would be better, yeah, right? <laughs> Have master, but boyfriend would be better, right? <laughs> it's no good on that boyfriend business, no. okay? You stay alone and you will see how happy if you last longer. Yeah. 
longer than two years, then you feel happier. If you are busy, yeah, doing something at least for yourself or something also meaningful, yeah, then you will not even think of no. even the most handsome man coming in front of you. You don't even see it. Yeah, you don't feel anything. Even if you do, you would know I oh, just a fleeting kind of uh, chemical reaction yes. or um, habits, you know. It's just, but you must keep yourself in good company and work, okay? Yes, Master. Yeah, because if you stay alone, you feel lonely and then you just want a company. Not really a boyfriend, you just want somebody to be around, talking to, or helping you do some nailing. I do all my nailing myself. Yeah, just now even. I have to fix my place. Yeah, I have to hang curtain to keep it warmer, yeah? And nail something to secure my door, stuff like that, yeah? The door of the stage, the door of the floor, you know? Not my door, I don't have any door. It's just if you go to the roof, there are some doors, you know? <laughs> door from the second or other floor, I, I have to secure it. I did it all myself. Busy yourself, make yourself just like handyman even, yeah? Yeah, busy yourself or read books, yeah? Read important spiritual books. Yes, master. And uh, go outside, volunteer with some, but that's also dangerous, because because <laughs> <laughs> for for other men, I mean, not for you, but <laughs> for the fleeting kind of boyfriend. Energy spent on physical pleasure is very precious. It depletes you truly. You must save it as much as you can, so that you can go further, because you have only so much energy and fuel. If you dispense it all on the way, then of course you will delay your journey or uh, stay in one low level. Hmm? Yes, that's, Master. Yeah, that's why even St. Peter say best is to stay single. But really, if you cannot, then get married, get married, yeah. Yeah, I don't mean you, I mean, St. Peter say that to, to other people, to his disciple followers, yeah? Most uh, um, masters, they, they married before they became master, yeah? And after they even married, they understand that uh, physical contact, pleasure are not helpful to your spiritual elevation. Definitely not. It's not a joke. It's not that like uh, I'm wagging finger at you, like I'm better than you, nothing. This is just a fact like that. Okay? So cool down, chill out, meditate, do good. Do some volunteer job with our group. Yeah, do something good with your precious life. Okay? And time. Thank you, Master. Just cut off this kind of boyfriend stuff in your mind. Just determine that you don't want it. Then it will not happen. But if you're always lingering and thinking, oh, what, who is the next, you know, and keep looking, of course you will find one. Yeah, and then you waste your time in tears, in quarrel, or in adjusting and in uh, dispensing energy. There's nothing really good about that, truly like that, okay? Not that I forbid you or anything, but anyone who really wants to go high must downsize his uh, physical contact with the other sex. Understand that? Hmm. Uh, the energy you spend in, in sexual uh, activities is really harmful to you. Not just the body, but spiritual, emotion, mental psychological, psychic as well, mm, psychic, everything. You're just spending and spending and spending. F your energy is just wasting, flowing out, mm, instead of conserving, yeah? I teach you to do Kuan Yin because you return it inward also, not just because hearing the higher dimension the Word of God, but also return back to your energy, okay? Through, through the Kuan Yin activity, yeah? That's why most people, when they meditate, they put their legs together. 
and the palm together somewhere, okay? Yes. Even in a magic school, yeah, they also tell you that. That if you talk to somebody, you better cross your legs together. Maybe you cannot do the lotus because it's too obvious when you do deal with a business, but at least you cross it together under there. And then make sure your hand also not to out open. Because in case that person has bad energy, it will just flow into you. And you are dispensing by uh, leaving yourself open and vulnerable. Right? Your legs open, your arms open, and then you talk as well, and your ear open to listen. Your eyes have to look at that person. The more close, the better. Hmm? Even in magic school, they teach you that. So this uh, physical contact with other gender, you know, opposite gender, is really an outflow of a lot of energy. You concentrate your all on that act, yeah? Or you will feel frustrated and not satisfied. And when you concentrate your all on that, then you are just here. You, you're just in that act. You are just in a physical dimension. At least for that moment or that time you spend with your physical partner, you leave heaven. You left your true self. You forget higher dimension. And we don't have a lot of time. We have too little time already for spending on work, on shopping, cooking, dressing, uh, driving, all kinds of things already. And we have only like one and a half hour, two hours to meditate already, if you have. Yeah? And then extra on that, you spend more energy. The physical pleasure costs a lot of energy, more than any other activities. Because you concentrate your all, you give your all in that moment. And it's a waste of a lot of precious energy. Hmm? Not to talk about there at that moment, you are just right there, you're nowhere else higher, okay? Just in a lower dimension, lower level, lower chakra. Huh? And you want to go high here, you don't go low down. Hmm? Hmm. Okay. All right, any other? Master, I was just wondering, what more can we do? We have um, a loving hut in Ohio, hmm? and it's crazy busy all the time. People love it. I'm just feeling like we could do more to share the teachings, though, because hmm. everyone's going vegan, hmm. and, and what more can we do to help? You put on TV, SMTV, if people ask you, you tell them. Okay. And you want to be a preacher? Go well, ahead. I don't know, like more flyers? We used to do uh, flyers. Yeah, do whatever you think. Okay, do whatever what you think. We, we want to help Yeah, more. understand, because your yeah. situation is different, you know? You do what you can. You, you just use your IQ, think tank, okay? okay? Or get together and say, what else can we do? Huh? Uh, with your staff, with your uh, friends, so what else can we do? Then just do it. It depends also on your uh, finance, your capability, or where you live, whether or not it's easier to talk to people, or whatever you do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they just organize a, a talk, but only on TV. Some people just put master video there, everybody watch, and then you explain this and that, and by the way, you talk to them. Mm? Whatever you can do, okay? Yes, thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? In the series of SMTV, the ancient predictions of the Era Dorada. In the series of SMTV of the Golden Era? Yes. Sí. Uh, Sabemos que eh, a través de los diferentes capítulos eh, se ven predicciones de que la maestra es la segunda venida de Jesús y todas las predicciones de, de los Hopi y las antiguas tradiciones. Um, uh, in the different chapters they show about uh, the different predictions uh, about Supreme Master and Jesus. La segunda. And other y todas las tradiciones. And all the traditions. Ok. Y como SMTV es una televisión pública para todo el mundo, no solo para los discípulos, yo and, creo... Ok. Y porque uh, SM. SMTV es una public um, uh, Television. TV uh, mm. station. For every, for every, para todo el mundo. For all the world. Mm. 
Yo creo, creo que la maestra tiene confianza sufic suficiente en todos los seres humanos que la van a ayudar y la van a soportar y que realmente van a querer en la maestra. He thinks that uh, you, um, he, he trusts you that everybody that watches SMTV channel will be um, following and believing in you. Mm, he hopes, yeah? <laughs> okay. Y si no, no estaríamos viendo esos capítulos. O sea, um, if not, we would not be watching those chapters about the predictions. Oh, if they watch them, they would believe me, right? <laughs> you hope. <laughs> que la, creo que la maestra confía en los seres humanos lo suficiente para que crean en la maestra. He thinks that you trust in us for us to watch it and believe it. That's why they show it on SMTV. Mm. So, so what's the point? El punto es que, eh, que la maestra, cre yo creo que la maestra en el futuro va a tener mucho más soporte de lo que tiene ahora. He just thinks that you will have a lot more support um, that, than the one that you already have now. Hmm, you mean because of the because ancient of the prediction? Because and everybody watching and believing uh, in, in your teaching. But what teaching. has that to do with ancient prediction? Oh, because there's a, um, a series about an ancient uh, predictions. Um, uh, uh, so he thinks about watching that. That one helped? Uh, it see. will help. And they uh. also show, you know, your teachings uh, okay. along with that. Uh, okay, okay. And he thinks that, you he, know. He hopes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> when, when Buddha was alive, yeah, sometimes he used his power to fly in the air even. Or his disciple fly in the air. Go through stones, go walk through stones like nothing. And how many people believe in the Buddha? It seems a lot, but not a lot. When Jesus was alive, he brought the dead back to life. He cured the blind, I mean physically. He broke a small little sea wheat into, he fit 500 people. Huh? Physically, directly in front of them. How many people believe him because of that? We just show what we show, okay? Just to, for education, yeah? For interesting program. Uh, just show the truth. Whatever we show, it's just the truth. But mm, mm, it's not necessary people believe in that. If they do, of course, it's good. Yeah. Uh, it's a very interesting program. Yeah. And just show the truth. Yeah. And it is very good that. Uh, Yeah, I'm also amazed <laughs> when I saw the last one, you know, I said, my God, where did they find all this <laughs> prediction? Yeah, the staff are amazing, you know? Yes. When I saw something about um, Nostradamus, yeah, the last name of the prophet, yeah, yeah, they even know that, <laughs> Nostradamus, They turn around, become Suma, yeah? I said, my God, they're amazing. They're so enlightened people and so sincere. I'm so, you know, so proud of them. But that doesn't always translate into any believers. You know, people are people. But it's a very good wish and a very positive hope. <laughs> yeah, we will see, huh? Okay, huh? Okay. Yeah, all right. Yeah, you want to ask? I have a bit of good news. Yes. Um, when we came with the airline, they messed up our vegan meals. Vegan meals? And so oh. then I explained to the uh, wait, the stewards, I said, um, you guys continue to mess this up. I said, if you had vegan meals, mm. if you had vegan options instead of vegetarian options, mm. you can feed 100% of the people because 100% of vegetarians will eat vegan. Mm. And uh, and he said, well, we usually keep 10 items here and because of uh, the different uh, different religions, different people's health, and so on. Mm. I said, if you had an a organic plant-based diet, mm. then you can feed many of the people. For example, uh, it's kosher by, by default. Mm. So you, you don't have to worry about Jews and uh, Indians, Muslims, I said, because people are traveling. They're not sitting down for uh, some big cuisine. They just want a, a meal for travel and go. 
And I said, you, you're missing all of this. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, uh, he said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to uh, talk to the uh, people. He said, in fact, I'll give it to the CEO. Mm -hmm. So it may turn into something great. Yeah, good. We can always uh, help people on the way, you know, when you travel. Yes. You wanted to talk? Okay. Dear okay, Master, I hear you now. Yeah. I just would like to convey Iranian uh, Failure Initiates message to you, because uh, they can't come to Taiwan. So they ask me to convey and tell uh, you that they oh, love yeah. you. They love you and they wish you utmost health, protection, happiness and success forever and ever. Please, uh, same to them, okay? Thank you, Master. God bless you. Please convey my I will. I will. love. All, All my heart. Okay. Thank you. Very happy. Uh, there's no cakes and candy, nothing here. Oh yeah, some. Can you can you send to them at all? I will. Uh, I will. It's just a little, my love. I don't know what else. Oh, okay. No, take the whole thing. And you divide those different packets and send it to them. I'll put in a box and they share. Thanks for your question. Okay. Thank you. All right. Good. Well, any more important question or stuff? Just one. Yeah. I like what the brother had to say. We need to understand that SMTV is the medicine for this world today. Okay. SMTV is going to spread and it's going to be for the universe, for the future, because everything Master is doing is being documented now. So have a living guru, a living spiritual master documenting. Who documented? SMTV, all about you, master, all about your disciples, master. The more people see, the more people will get. Even having SMTV just playing on your computer in a room, the energy changes. Yeah, yeah. The same way Maya works, the molecular structure of most things in our young people, they hear the same things over and over and over. It's played at a certain decibel. The same way SMTV is counteracting that. It is the medicine for this age. So okay. wherever you are, wherever you live, if you leave SMTV on in the corner of your flat, it spreads throughout the whole building. Yeah, it does. If you leave it in the whole building, it spreads for five miles. So SMTV, what the brother was trying to say, is probably in this age, the medicine for this age. Okay. So if everybody actually puts it on, leaves it on. Yeah. It doesn't cost you anything. The same way you leave your laptop on, your iPads on, whatever. If you just have SMTV playing, you're benefiting your neighbors, your animals, every living entity within that five miles. It does, it does. It yes. does. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. That's why Maya tried to even disrupt me in one of those first days of my first retreat ever seen in Taiwan, you know. Suddenly the SMTV just blocked out and just noise, just a whole like that. <laughs> because he does it so discreetly, you know. So I asked Heaven, oh, what is that? Who dared to do that? He say, Maya. I say, why does he do that? And they said, because you and the SMTV form the ring of protection mm -hmm. everywhere. Uh, he tried to scare you out of it, you know. I live very low volume because I meditate, you know, I just leave it on low volume. And then they make it like a big, I mean, then the whole room, you know, is reverberated with like a big uh, loudspeaker everywhere in the room, just like that. And then I asked Maya himself, what are you doing? And the entity said to me, ah, uh, television, noisy, too noisy for you. I stopped the television. <laughs> Understand? <laughs> I haven't said no. He wants to stop your, the energy, uh, break the protection ring. Of course, I knew that also, but sometimes the Maya is very tricky, you know. He, he, he does things, but he hides his hand. Maybe you're thinking he's in trouble with your TV. He's not. Just like he make a little, little bird, you know, make a trumpet in like an elephant, just to disturb me. TV is too noisy for you. Even call me master and all that, as if he's a, some very good being or angel or something. Yeah. TV is too noisy for master. 
<laughs> oh, yeah. Sometimes he can disguise, make himself look like he's concerned about me. I know the trick. Telling lie and all that, you know. I say, I have no respect for you. You just too much, you know, below the dignity even for Maya. Mm. Okay, but sometimes he, he cannot hide. If I tell him, ask him directly, he has to admit it. Yeah. First he say he's an angel, he's a whatever, you know. I say, tell me the truth. And then he he has to tell me, it's Maya. <laughs> because he knows I can find out, you know. Mm. Are you guys okay? Yes. All right. I don't really want to leave you also because you came here only one week, you know, and you're leaving already, you know, tomorrow, right? Some of you. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you have many Indians brother around you? I do. Or just your... These are precious for your family and in initiates, Indian initiates in your area or send back to India. Just my love. Thank you. It's not much All right. Thank you. Nah, don't be jealous. Be happy. <laughs> Thank you. Love you. Are you okay? Really? Huh? Okay? Okay, okay. Yes. Man, I sit here on comfortable chair and I feel a little cramped. How would you? Really? You are something on you. <laughs> I know, I'm so impressed, you know, that you can do that. I'm not sure if I can. Truly. Yeah, yeah it's okay. It's he, he just his usual, praising master all the time. Make me evil. <laughs> okay, somebody help me with this? Thank you. All right. Uh, I want to see you forever. Truly like that, because you're wonderful. Yeah. I feel good with you guys. Just. I will make you see the river, huh? You. you, where are you going next? Just stay here and meditate? Yeah, yeah. Stay here and meditate. Oh, upstairs, yeah. meditate, yeah. Okay, stay indoor if you can, wherever, okay? I go and meditate also. Myself. <laughs> Love you. Take care of the. Oh, teacher, okay? Ah, tell Kuo and Lao Su. And get Lao Da the Lao Su, huh? Oh, I really am impressed with you. Truly, I'm not saying that to make you happy. I don't know how you sit all day or night like this. Even just for one week, you're really a creature of, I don't know, uh, tough. Tough, tough, tough. I will forever love you through all the world, through all the lovers, through all the beauties that you saw at dawn. To all the beauty that you saw again.